use the WJ4 ECAD scoring and reporting. The scoring is similar to all of our WJ4 assessments. They're all part of the Riverside Score platform. Included with the purchase of the test kit are 25 record forms and 25 of those student response booklets. The record forms each provide one credit in the online scoring platform. This is something important to remember as you use your first 25 record forms, which would be your first 25 credits in the system, they never expire. So if you don't use them all within the first year you have the test kit, they're gonna roll over and roll over as long as you have the kit. However, let's say you exhaust all those first 25 record forms, in which would be your 25 credits. All you would need to do is call up our, or go on our website and, and purchase another package of 25 record forms that always comes with 25 student response booklets. The credits are added to your Riverside Score account. If you're already a user of a WJ4 assessment and have a Riverside Score account, you can always add this test to it. That provides you with one single username and one login. You're able to access all of your WJ4 assessments right there in one place. There's also the ability to add on for an additional charge the WJ4 WIP program. And we're gonna briefly go over that as well in a few slides. Every score that's, that's run on this platform for the WJ4 ECAD is based on age-based norms. There are no grade-based norms because grade-based norms were not, not run during the standardization of the WJ4 ECAD because not every student was in a formalized educational setting during this assessment. Knowing that this is a young age group, you have some kids who might be in a home daycare, a home preschool, they might be in a more formalized preschool. There's just so many different settings that a student could be in. So just know that you are only able to run a report based on age-based norms. Some scores available are your raw scores. Um, those are not reported out on the report itself, but you use those and you input them into Riverside Score to get age equivalents. You can get W different scores, relative proficiency index scores, developmental zones, percentile ranks, standard scores, and delay scores, both month delay, percent delay, and standard deviation delay. Here is an example of a basic score report that's included with your WJ4 ECAD. This is a table of scores based on a student who would be five years, one month. And this is an example of some of the scores you can include. You are always able to choose what scores you want to show on your score report. So if W scores is something you don't want to see, you could simply set up your scoring template in the Riverside Score platform to not include the W scores. Let's say you don't want RPI scores on there. Same there. You can take those off. You can choose what you want to show on your report. Here you'll see that I chose to have the cluster and then the, the subtest all listed underneath those cluster scores. So when I'm looking at the GIA, the early development GIA for this five-year-old student, I would see that the student has a standard score of an 84 with a band of 81 to 86, and that places them in the 14th percentile rank band for their, for their age. This would be a classification of low average. This is a way to organize your testing results. And remember, this is free reporting that's included with your WJ4 ECAD kit purchase. This is an example of looking at those subtest scores and cluster scores for the levels of development and delay scores. So remember, this is something that's very unique to the WJ4 ECAD. We do not have this with the WJ4 test of achievement, oral language, or cognitive abilities. None of those have these specific scores that could really help you determine if a student has delays in cognitive ability or in some of these academic skill areas. Looking at this chart, I have again my cluster and then all the tests underneath it. So I'm going to see sound blending, picture vocabulary, verbal analogies, visual closure, sentence repetition, and rapid picture naming. Those are all my GIA tests, right? Those are my cognitive ability measures. I look and I see that the level of development is right to the right-hand side in that column. I have a month delay reading, a percentage delay, and a standard deviation delay listed as well. This provides you with additional data to bring to that table when you're sharing your testing results. Beyond just standard scores and percentile ranks, this really can resonate with not only teachers, 
parents, but anybody else who needs to service that student and, and measure their progress as you intervene with different uh, interventions within the classroom or setting. The last part of the report, the basic report that's included with every WJ4 ECAD kit, is looking at comparison measurements. So thinking about your GIA, much like we do with any of our tests, and comparing it to the academic ability or the academic achievement that this student has on the WJ ECAD. That's the really nice thing about the ECAD. Everything's in one place. You can test not only your GIA and get a good idea of their cognitive skills, strengths and weaknesses in those areas. You can also then compare that directly to three tests that are within the WJ4 ECAD. So you're able to really kind of do apples and apples at this point, right? You're using the same test. So what I see here based on this student that I tested five years, one month, early academic skills, the actual score when we average all those tests together is 106. If the system was using the GIA from the ECAD, the predicted score is an 88. So this student actually overachieved based on what the expectation was. And that difference was 18 points. What's listed next are the discrepancy percentile, discrepancy standard deviation, and then also is this a significant strength or a weakness. This is going to help you, again, as you're sharing those testing results with the people at the table discussing the student, how to program effectively for them. Again, all of these testing results that I've just showed are part of the purchase of the kit. This is included. WJ4 ECAT also has a score interpretation chart, which can help you to share this with other people who are looking at the test results, and also to help yourself to understand where are these scores falling. This is an example of where our criterion reference interpretation of RPI scores would fall based on ranges. The ECAD standard score interpretation, which shows you the standard score range, the percentile rank range, and the classifications, as well as the W difference interpretation chart at the bottom of the page. If you're looking to do a lot more comprehensive reporting, if you're looking to build interventions into your reporting, all of that's available. However, it's available at an additional charge. We do have a program that's called the Woodcock Johnson for Interpretation and Instructional Interventions Program. It's fondly known as the WIP. This links WJ4 results to interventions. This program, if added to your basic scoring account for that additional charge, can help you to write and facilitate report writing so you can focus on interpretation and program planning. This program, if added to your basic scoring account for that additional charge, would be applicable to the WJ4 achievement, oral language, cognitive, as well as the WJ4 ECAD. So you're able to run comprehensive reports on all four of those batteries. Comprehensive report options would be included as well as qualitative checklists. The program actually works where it detects where there are weaknesses in a profile. And what it provides to you are hundreds of formative and evidence-based interventions. And it provides an interpretive overview and a narrative of scores. More detail can always be included with the test appendix. And if selected, checklists and evidence-based and formative interventions can also be included. A score report is always included and it is, again, available for an additional charge. Basic scoring is always free with our Woodcock Johnson product. Just to give you some examples of the WJ WIP program for the ECAD, this is an example of recommendations and instructional interventions. This would be populated into your report. In this example, this is Polly, and Polly has some areas that popped up as weaknesses for her in her profile using the ECAD. So instead of having to search through books and sift through research, I can enter in my raw scores into a program, have a report completely written for me, editable, so I can add my own voice to the report or take things out of the report that I may not want there. But also, I'm going to get all these interventions, which are going to be so impactful for this young student that has this very young window of opportunity to really intervene and make a difference in their educational journey. Here's an example of a detailed interpretation of clusters and tests. Again, the program is writing this out for you. It's not only going to define what a GIA is, 
for you and everyone else picking up the report, but it's going to explain how this specific student did on a test, on a cluster. For additional information on pricing on the WJ WIF reporting system, for again, the WJ ECAD and all of your WJ programs, you can visit our website for more information. In summary, the WJ4 ECAD is an assessment that's looking at early cognitive and academic development skills. The age range is two years, six months, through seven years, 11 months, with an extended age range of eight years of age through nine years, 11 months. Items and artwork are specifically designed for the young children. They captivate them, they keep them engaged longer. There's better item density than the WJ4, and it's a single easel test booklet. This ECAD is co-normed with the WJ4 test batteries and it provides easy scoring and recording, providing valuable data to help assess young children, determine a student's cognitive and academic skill profile and help with goal development and educational planning.